Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today is going to be another trying to fix it video. Another video where I've bought something that's supposed to be faulty off eBay and then I'm going to do my best to fix it. Now I already know what's in this one here, it should be a job lot off Nintendo Switch docks. So it might be quite boring but at the same time the dock is an essential part of the Nintendo Switch. So uh, because I've started to kind of buy a few broken Nintendo Switches and trying to fix them, then it would be nice to have the docks to go with them as well. So uh, I'll show you what I paid for this in a minute. Let me just open it up and make sure that they are definitely in here. Now it said on the listing that it was untested. It said that uh, they do not have the leads to test. But the weird thing is they also sell a load of Nintendo Switches as well. So you think if that was your business that you would probably get, you know, for example, a HDMI lead and a uh, AC adapter cable to test them but uh, who knows you never know maybe they are untested if they are untested you would hope that out of the I can't remember how many I bought I think it was five you would hope that some of them will be working so uh, we've got one two three four five right it looks like that's got an interesting modification remember when the switch first, first of all came out everybody was worried about damaging their uh, screens by inserting it in here so that's got uh, A uh, some sort of fabric. God, it's well and truly stuck on there. Right, I'll have to look at that. I don't know if that's going to peel off easy or not. Maybe it's just some sort of double-sided tape. Right, so there's that one there. Got serial numbers on there. Looks okay. A little bit dusty, but it looks okay. Again, a little bit grubby. Looks like it's had some sort of sticker put on the bottom of it here. Not sure why it's got double sided tape all over it. Again, it looks like it's going, this one looks like it's going a little bit inward. But again, okay, I'm sure that's going to clean up. This one looks in better condition. Again, serial number, that one's got a serial number. First impressions again. It looks alright. Right, this one's missing a back. So the little back flap, but it's not really a problem, that's just to hide away the, the wires. It's got some kind of uh, sticker on the side here. Right, okay, and last one, it's got the back flap. Again, condition is okay, a bit scratched, but uh, not too bad. Yes, yeah, so they all look okay, so uh, let's uh, show you what I paid for them and then we'll test them. You never know, I might be lucky, and they might all work. Right, okay, so, this is what I paid for them. I paid, uh, it, was a, it was a bid on this one, it wasn't a buy it now, it was a bid, so I got them off eBay. It was uh, 13 people bid, and I got them for 63 pounds, plus nine pound 50 postage, so you're looking at 72 pound 50, and uh, there's five, so let's just do a quick bit of math. So 72.5 divided by 5. So I pay for them £14.50 each, which is not too bad. You know, the docks are actually quite expensive. Remember that you don't get HMI cables with it, but they're dirt cheap. But more importantly, you don't get the Nintendo power supply. And they are quite expensive. I think if you were to buy them, you're probably going to be looking at around about £20 each. But you never know, I might be able to get some job lot of them in the future as well. Right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing them. Now... I don't actually want to use my own switch because let's say if there is something dodgy with these then I don't want to have the hassle of breaking my switch because this has got all my saved data on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using one of the switches that I repaired before and just to show you that it does dock when it's in my dock. This is the, the proper dock that I already own. There you go, so you can see it works. Now what I'm going to do as well is, because I want to make sure that it's not just docking, I want to make sure that it charges the switch, I'm going to change it up here from just a battery symbol to the actual percentage. So I'm going to go into system settings, and I'm going to go down to uh, system. Now where is it? Console battery, here we go. Right, on. And now it should come up with a little percentage up there. So you can see at the moment it's 91%. So on each of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be plugging it in. And I want to see that that should increase when it's plugged in. Right, okay, so let's get set up and get these tested. 
Right, okay, so first things first, let's just go through them all. So I'm going to start with the one that's had the modification on, this one here. So we're going to take the HDMI cable out and the power adapter. I'm going to keep this to one side and I'm going to plug it in. I also need to get a USB, uh, a USB device as well because I need to make sure that they are that all the USB ports are working. Right, okay, so let's plug in the first one and see if it docks. Okay, it's a very snug fit. It's gone out, green light, fantastic. Okay, so it definitely docks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that plugged in. I'm going to get uh, some USB controller or something to test out the USB ports. And I'm just going to hopefully see that that will increase over time. Right, okay, so that's gone up to 92%, so it is definitely charging. Right, let's just test out the USB ports on this now. So I've got a little poke controller, and I'm going to be plugging it into each of the USB ports to see if it's recognised. So I'm going to start with the bottom one. Yeah, there you go, that's been recognised. Let's move up to the next one. And again, that's fine. Right, and then I need to go into one on the back. So really, I only need to get two of these docks working to kind of break even money-wise. Yeah, perfect. Right, so what I need to do on this one is to clean it up itself. So let's unplug everything. I'm happy that that's all working. So I just need to remove these little furry bits here. I mean, obviously, they probably do provide slight protection to the switch, but I think if you're careful putting it in and out, then you're unlikely to get your screen covered in scratches. Really, the most important thing you should do with your switch is put a glass screen protector on it anyway. So, uh, you know, because it is made out of plastic and it does scratch easily. So I'm happy with that. I just need to clean it up. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, so there's a problem with this one. Can you see the green flashing light? Okay, so this is not working, this one. I'm just going to take out the power supply and then going to put it in the other way around. So it's like reversed. Right, okay, so that one's definitely not working. Yeah, okay. So when you take it out, the light does go out, but uh, when you plug it in, it stops working. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to keep this over this side here, and then I'm hoping by the end we have more ones over the left-hand side than the right-hand side. Probably makes the video more interesting, though, if you do have one or two that are faulty. Looking good. Fantastic. Right, that one docks. Now remember we're at 91% on the top right hand side. So what I'm going to try is the USB ports again. Okay, so that seems fine. Now obviously this is just initial testing. It could turn out to be, let me just leave that plugged in for a while until it goes up to a 92%. It could turn out to be, for example, that once you have it in there for half an hour or an hour, it starts to overheat or something like that. But uh, yeah, I haven't heard a lot of horror stories about the Nintendo Switch dock. So I'm hoping this initial test works. So I'm hoping that it should continue to work. But it doesn't mean that there might not be some other problem because remember, I don't know the history of these and maybe they were sent back for a particular reason. Some people can be very fussy and they can be worried. Well, it's not necessarily fussy, but let's say now if uh, if the Nintendo Switch was ever so slightly bent in like this, which can sometimes happen because, you know, when they're manufactured, then it could be just slightly bent. And some people would see that as a defect and then they would send it back for a new one. Right, okay, so that's gone up to 92%, so it looks like that one is charging okay. Brilliant. Okay, so out of the five of them, 
I've got three good ones, I just need to clean up one of them where it's got the uh, added sticky bit on. And uh, I've got the fourth one with the missing back, which is easy just to take the back off that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart the faulty one and see if I can see anything that's wrong. And maybe I might try swapping a few parts between this one and that one, and then I might be able to pinpoint exactly what's wrong with that one and uh, see if we can get it fixed. Okay, so I'm going to get something down on the floor, and then that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on these two here. Now I have actually taken one of these apart before and that's when I first forgot the Nintendo Switch. I kind of did a bit of a tear down on the dock because a lot of people were wondering you know, what, uh, what it is that's inside it. So uh, I know at the back that you've got a few tri-wing screws that I need to undo. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then from memory there's more screws down the bottom on the inside. So uh, let's start taking this one apart. So it's strange with this one, it definitely recognises that the switch is inside, but yet it doesn't actually do anything with uh, it. doesn't do anything with it, it's just got that flashing green light, and I'm not 100% sure what that flashing green light means. So I'm going to take it apart to begin with, and then if I can't see anything obvious, then what I'll do is I'll just uh, Google it and see if there's any information on Google about it, because it might be a common fault. From memory there is a ribbon cable connector. That uh, goes from the port down the bottom, the USB-C port down at the bottom, to the motherboard at the back. So it'd be nice if that was just like partially loose or something. Okay, so that's the back out of it with all the screws. And here we have the little motherboard here. The ribbon cable looks like it's fully in place. So, uh, I mean, maybe it's an issue with one of the chips. But we'll see. That's interesting, that chip looks very similar to the power connector chip that's in the Nintendo Switch. I've got to double check that. If you look at that one up there. M92T55. Hmm. I'm sure that that was the chip that was in my bricked Switch. You know my first Nintendo Switch? I need to double check that uh, that chip, but that'd be interesting because it'd be a damn sight cheaper getting one off this board here rather than the one in the Nintendo Switch. Uh, mm, that's very interesting because those chips are like, uh, I don't know, they're up on 20 or 30 pounds by the time you take into account shipping from the US. So if that was the case, it'd be cheaper just to get it off this board here. Or, you know, just off uh, other docks that you can buy off eBay. Right, okay, let's undo the back. So we've got a load of little Phillips screws now. Hold on a minute, there's another chip there as well. M92T17. M92T54. Oh, okay. So uh, they're similar, but they're ever so slightly different. So maybe the one on the Nintendo Switch is different, because if you have a look there, that's a slightly different one again. M92. I'm not sure if that's a T17. I don't know. It's quite now nice how it works, so what happens is when you dock the switch, it's got this little spring-loaded bit that then exposes the USB-C port there. So when you push it in, it's got two little holes here on the switch, and these correspond, see those little holes? These correspond to these little male parts here, and then that's what allows it to fit perfectly onto the USB port without you having to try to keep wiggling it to find it, which would cause damage over time. And it's quite nice, so it locates on there and then just drops onto it. Well, it all looks to be perfectly fine here. I can't see any obvious sign of damage or anything on this part of it. I bet it turns out to be some kind of chip or something that's uh, gone on it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely dismantle 
the other one now, you know, the working one without the uh, back, and I'm going to swap parts about. So, for example, I'm going to swap, swap this over, swap this over, and then pinpoint it down. Probably find out that it's going to be this actual board here, but I don't know for that, for, you know, for sure. I don't know that. It could, for example, be a faulty port here, or it could be something wrong with the ribbon cable, although it does look fine. You never know, it might be a bad contact here or something. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is, remember this is the good motherboard. I'm just going to put the bad motherboard in here, and then we're going to see if this one docks. If it docks, then we know it's a problem with, for example, the ribbon cable or the port down here. If it doesn't dock, if it just flashes, I know the problem's with the motherboard. And I don't have to dismantle this one further, because we already know what it looks like on the inside anyway. So, uh, let's pop this in. Well, actually, first of all, let's put this one back in. Well, isn't that interesting? Look at that, it works. So, that is brilliant news because it means it isn't the motherboard. So it's not those chips or anything. So it must be, unless there's a bad connection, it must be either the ribbon cable here or this port here. So, let's put these suspected faulty parts on the good motherboard on the switch with the missing back and let's see what happens there but now if you look at that one there that is doing what it's supposed to do let's just make sure that that wasn't a fluke ready now okay let's look at the lights light goes to green and it comes up there so that's fantastic I was sure it was going to be the motherboard right okay uh, that's really good news because there's more chance of being able to fix this or I'm pretty sure you can even buy spare ones of these. Okay. I'll leave it out just for the time being. Even just the uh, process of me unplugging this and plugging it in might have uh, freed up whatever the issue was if there was, you know, if there was an issue with the ribbon cable. Now uh, do you know what? I should be able to do this just on the uh, without putting it into the dock, shouldn't I? So let's put the ribbon cable in. Now I'm thinking that it doesn't matter which way this goes around. I'm pretty sure that this was the one. This was the one in here because of the bends on it. So I'm going to put it back in the same way. Okay, so that's in. And now I'll plug that into here. There. Uh, and that is it. Now we're going to plug in this to here. And this to here. And now when we... Oh, hold on now. I've got to make sure I dock this the right way, haven't I? Uh -huh. Let me work this out a second because although USB-C is reversible, I don't know if the Nintendo Switch whether it's reversible or not because remember we have this section here. We've got that big lump there at the back and that lump goes into this part here so you can't put the switch in backwards, you can only put it in forwards. So that says to me, I took it out that way, so the ribbon cable is going to have to go towards the back, isn't it? So if I put... Uh, that big lump, so the missing section on there, I should be okay. Right, okay, let's see what happens now. Let's see if I can get this in shot okay. There you go, you can get a bit of the TV there. Put this back. So I'm going to plug it in like so. Right, well, that's interesting. So it doesn't dock. It doesn't dock. So. It could either be the ribbon cable or that little connector. So now we need to swap it over. Let's swap it over with this uh, this one 
gonna have to take apart this, aren't I? Yeah, I'm gonna have to take apart this to get to the ribbon cable and then I can work out if it's the ribbon cable or this. So you can see what I'm doing here is just basically a process of elimination. I'm just I'm just swapping the parts over until I get to uh, you know until I get to it. So right now I know that the motherboard's okay here, but I know that this motherboard's okay because it was working before. So it must be either the ribbon cable or this connection. So that's what I'm going to start to swap now. And hopefully then in a few minutes time we should now know exactly what the fault is. So it is much easier to fault find when you have you know more than one piece of equipment. If you just had the dock on its own, I would have said that it was a motherboard fault. But as you can see now it's not the motherboard fault. So it's really easy when you already have something to keep swapping things about. Right, okay, so I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try so these are the good ones, so let me First we'll do the ribbon cable. I hope I did that ribbon cable the right way around. Uh, shouldn't make a difference, should it, with a ribbon cable? I'm sure, it's just pin to pin. Right, okay, so let's do... Right, so I've swapped the ribbon cable now. Let's pop that into here. Okay, so good board, good ribbon cable, possibly bad fault uh, port. So let's see if it does anything now. Right, so that's going to be towards the back. Excellent. Right, so it's the ribbon cable, isn't it? Because with the uh, dodgy port. It's not dodgy, it's working up there. So that says to me that it is the uh, the ribbon cable. So let's now go on to this one, this one, and the good port just to make sure. And if I'm correct, then this ribbon cable shouldn't work. Okay. So now, let's plug it in. And nothing, so 100% it's a faulty ribbon cable. Now I wonder if that can be repaired or not. Let me clean the contacts. Would well, you know what I'm gonna do to begin with? I'm gonna do continuity tests between all the pins if I can get to them. So uh, I think what I should do is, let's uh, take that out, let's keep this here. Let's put this over this side so I don't get them mixed up. Just keep it off the carpet in case there's any static. And uh, let's pop this off. Let's see if I can do a continuity test on here. I should be able to because I should be able to go to all the pins. Now, do you know what I've just noticed? If you have a look here, I mean, I don't know if this is if this is it because it may be just like a slight manufacturing defect. But is it just me, or does it seem does the gold pin seem to be longer on this side than this side? Do you know what I mean? Like if you have a look there, can you see? That you've got the gold pins, but look where my thumb is. There's like a little line where there's kind of uh, uh, just there where the, my nail is, and that line seems to be getting bigger. It seems to be going upwards. I wonder, does it just need pushing in? No, no, I think that's just uh, how it was manufactured. I, mean, I can't see anything. Definitely no tears or anything on it. It all looks pretty good. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'll do a continuity test if I can between each of the pins. It might be quite hard because my multimeter is not the best for that. But uh, that's what I'll try and do. And I might be able to see which pins are faulty because it can't be the connector here 
and it can't be the connector here because they both, you know, they've both been working on other things. So it's definitely just a ribbon cable. You might even be able to buy them. I haven't checked yet, but if you can, that would be uh, be very. Shouldn't be a lot of money. This is really weird. So basically I've gone across all the pins this way and this way and as far as I can see there's continuity on every single one and if I go to like the uh, ground there's continuity there as well. So that is strange because there is continuity. I'm wondering whether I mean, I can definitely see a ridge. I'm wondering whether there is a ridge which is not making a good contact actually when it's in the uh, when it's in the connector. Either that, or remember, I've straightened that out now. Maybe when it's all bent up, it loses uh, loses one of the connections. So maybe I should try it now when it's all like this, and uh, you know, when it's all nice and flat, because that's how I've just tested it. So let me try that now. Yes, it's gone out. Excellent. Right, okay, so there's a problem with the ribbon cable, isn't there? It must be when it's bunched up that it's not working because it's working right now. So let's undo it from here. Right, and let's try to, uh, you know, fold it and bunch it up a bit and let's see what happens now. I can't remember exactly how the folds were. I think it was like that. Like this. Right, let's try that now. Yeah, it's working. Well, isn't that weird? I wonder was it a dirty contact or something? Right, let me give it a let me give it a good clean. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to give both of the contacts a really good clean. I mean, it's good that it's working, but I would have rather sort of seen the fault. You know, if I seen that one of the contacts was corroded or something, then I would know that that was the fault. But uh, maybe when I put it back in, because it's going to be angled a lot more, like extreme bends. I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to angle it like this because that's how it. I, I think it's going to be in the dock, something like that, and then we'll try it again. Yeah, it's working just fine. There it goes. Right, okay, uh, I think I'm going to put it back together. And what I'm going to do, actually, before I put it back together, I'm going to reuse all the original faulty equipment, just in case it's the combination of that ribbon cable with this particular dock, uh, you know, sorry, the USB port. You know, if it was somehow going, uh, if it was just ever so slightly misaligned, it might be kind of putting pressure on a certain pin, which is not making a contact. So let's put it completely back to how it should be. So this is the faulty board, which is no longer faulty, the faulty ribbon cable, which is no longer faulty, and I'm going to use the faulty connector here as well. See what happens now. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, there was an issue with the ribbon cable. There is no longer an issue with the ribbon cable, and I don't quite know what that issue is. Maybe it was just... Uh, a slightly bad contact somewhere along the line not too sure right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two docks back together and uh, then hopefully we will have five working docks Right, okay, let's test this one out now. Yeah, green light's gone to solid and it's coming up there. So uh, I'll just test the USB side of it. And it's on 84% at the moment. Uh, 
Oh, that's interesting. USB's not working now. No, let's see if the Joy-Cons are working. Oops, I turned it off. Yeah, so they're working. No, so USB is not working. Right, okay. So there's still more faulty with this. Yeah, look, none of the USBs are working. Let me just double check there hasn't been something gone wrong with my controller in the meantime. It's highly unlikely. Uh, Let's just get one of these. Get the one without the, the sticky bit on the inside. Actually, when I took the dock out there, it remained. Oh no, it didn't, sorry, ignore that. I thought I took my switch out. Yeah, so it works there. Right, okay, let me try that again. Right, so it's definitely docking, and you can use it uh, as a dock now, which is good. So, you know, we're definitely making progress. These are working fine. Let's try the USB again, just in case it was something something unlucky with it. Oh, it does work. What is going on here? Hmm. Right, the charging's up to 85%. That's working fine now. Right, I'm not convinced with this dock, if I'm honest with you. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together the other one and then I'm going to try this one over and over again. And uh, let's see. Maybe it was a problem with my controller or something. That hasn't happened before. Right, anyway, let me just leave that there for a while and I'm going to put together this one here. So we're at 85%, so I want to see if that increases. back together that one has gone up to 86% so it definitely looks like it's charging but uh, like I said I'm not 100% convinced with that dock yet so I'm just going to test this one and then I'm just going to test this one over and over and over and over and over again I won't I won't uh, I'll just fast forward through it all so you won't have to watch every single bit of it I just want to make sure that it is actually working because the problem is when I was doing all that testing initially if it was an intermittent fault then uh, there's not really uh, if it was an intermittent fault, then uh, it, they're very hard to prove because, you know, by me wiggling around that ribbon cable, it could be okay now. But that's not to say now that over and over again it's not going to uh, go faulty again. So, uh, just want to do a bit of testing on it. Well, this one appears to be fine. There we go. I mean, this does need to check for charging on this one because I already did that last time. So, I'm definitely happy that this one here is working. Okay, so I'm just going to test this one over and over again, and then I'll uh, try to clean up the, the docks, and we'll be done then.
So there we go, each switch is lovely and clean and they've all come up really good. So I've got rid of all the sticky bits and all the add-ons so uh, they all look nearly perfect. I don't think anybody would be upset with them. So the only problem I've got is on this one here there's no back. I don't know if you can buy replacement backs but it's not really an issue. The cables all go in there still, so it's just that they're, they're not hidden away, you know, they're more on show but uh, it's not going to really affect your experience that much. So there we go. That was a really good one because it was just so easy. It was nice actually that one was faulty. I kind of wish that I had seen a fault with the ribbon cable, for example, like a bit of corrosion and something that I could have cleaned up and then got it working. But, uh, you know, you've seen it wasn't working. You've seen when I swapped out the motherboard that it started to work on the other one. And then you've seen that when I put the good motherboard in that one, it didn't work. And then you've seen when I swapped the ports, it did work and etc. So, like, you know, it was pinpointed to the ribbon cable. But actually, when I was testing the ribbon cable, I couldn't find any fault with it. Putting it all back together, it appears to be fine now. So I'm not 100% sure what is wrong with that ribbon cable. Maybe if you were to use it after a few weeks, it might go faulty again. But as it stands right now, I've got five docks that are working. Extensive testing hasn't been done on them, but you've certainly seen that each of them displays the picture on the TV. They charge up and all three of the USB ports work. So I think that was a good one. And I think for whatever the price was, £14.50 each, I personally think that that's a bit of a bargain, so I think that was a bit of a success story on that one. A uh, little bit of a shame that uh, that same seller was selling, I think it was uh, a bunch of four or five Nintendo Switches, and I bidded for it up to, I think it was about 150 or 160 pounds, and then uh, somebody else got in there with a higher bid. In hindsight, maybe they were all untested and they might have been just minor faults on them but uh, but who knows you know but i'm definitely happy with this lot here anyway so now in the future as i get more and more switches repairing them then they will have a home in each of the docks so uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want more fix it videos please subscribe and also how to videos as well so that's it for this video please take care see you soon bye now